Hi, I'm Leslie McVeigh. Welcome to Portland Media Center Member Highlights. Today we're out on beautiful Casco Bay on the Bay Mist um, with friends at Fort Gorgeous. It is a beautiful day and I'm here with the President of the Board, Roger Burley. We got about 50 people here on the Bay Mist, the Casco Bay Lines uh, party boat. And so we're just trying to acquaint as many people as possible and, and hopefully new people, people new to Portland or new to Fort Gorgeous, to what a gem this is out in the middle of Portland Harbor. People have probably been looking at this thing for a hundred or so years wondering what that is out there and why can't they get to it? Why can't we get to it? But here we are, we're circling the fort and introducing people to, to uh, the present and the future of Fort Gorgeous. So thank you. And the, the plan is to work with Casco Bay Lines in the city to be able to take people visiting the city or anyone out to the fort um, in, the, in the not too distant future. Very soon. And uh, we, we are going over the legal uh, ramifications and, and uh, jumping through those hoops with the city. They're, they're very supportive of us. Uh, but they move very slowly and cautiously, and we are—we see ourselves as the ticket to saving the fort, which is in serious physical distress. And we think that by uh, familiarizing a lot more people with, through events, um, we will be able to raise money that the city of Portland is not able to do to eventually uh, stabilize the fort physically and, and save it for many, many generations to come. And it's even more important now with access to the waterfront being diminished every day with the building that's going on, for people to be able to get on a boat and go out in the harbor and see one of our landmarks is really, really important. Uh, absolutely. People, yeah, public access. Uh, we will provide public access to the to the fort and we will provide access through arrangements with tour operators and through the city of Portland. We've uh, already done art and cultural programming at the fort that we weren't able to publicize because of our relationship with the city, but we've done it, we've demonstrated it, it was successful. In 20, that was 2016, we also funded an economic impact study. We know the value of this, we have hard numbers. Believe it or not, the fort, without our tours, without special events, today already the fort is contributing over a million dollars to the local economy. And once we start doing tours and special events, those numbers are gonna really ramp up. Um, something you may not know, without a dock, there's over 7,000 people that visit the fort just in the peak summer months every year. So we have all this data, it's proving to be very useful. That was 2016. In 2017, the Army Corps showed up and did a half million dollar safety improvement project. That's done. And here we are in 2018. We're on the verge of launching an access project. We're going to beef up that stone pier where the flagpole is and install some bollards. And hopefully by the end of this year, and if not this year, definitely 2019, we're going to pull this vessel alongside and have a paying audience of 300 attending events at the fort. That's my job. I'm now with Aaron Frederick. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Leslie. Hi, and you um, have been involved in so many things on the waterfront in Portland for all the years I've known you. What got you involved with Friends of Fort Gorgeous? Well, it's been such a, a resource here on the Bay for um, all the programs I've been involved with, uh, Ripple Effect and the Friends of the Presumpscot River, which I'm, I'm staring at the river mouth right now. Um, it is uh, a gem, unlike any other. I, I was 19 years old when I first paddled out here, borrowed a friend's kayak, and wanted to see what that strange castle was out in the water. And interestingly, had a couple of three-year-olds here today look out and say, wow, look at that castle. So it is a magical place. And it's obviously from another time and reminds us that um, our history here is deep and rich. And so I think um, making sure we, take good care of this resource and make sure uh, it doesn't crumble um, is important. Yeah. It is, and for those 
two little kids running around here today, for them to be grandfathers someday and be able to take their grandchildren out here and, and show them this beautiful place. Absolutely, and especially at this time where uh, for 60 years the city's owned it, it hasn't needed a whole lot, and we're realizing now as we go out in the winter and see big icicles splitting the casemates that um, we we need to invest in this resource now. So it's it's time to uh, pay attention to this big beast out there on the water. I'm now with Steve Russell, who's the newest board member of Friends of Fort Gorgeous. Hi, Steve. Hi, how you doing? Good, so, thanks for coming. So you're a longtime Mainer, right? Born and bred, call me a native. Yeah, Where, where'd you grow up? Right in Portland? Right in Falmouth, right down across the way there. So yeah. you, you've been looking at this fort for a while. I've been not looking at it, going around it and in it. Uh, all my life, yeah, absolutely. So what made you want to join the board? Well, interestingly, when I first heard about it was while I was at a seminar on salvage and met Paul and we were, uh, I was listening to what it was up and, and he told me about Friends of Fort Gorges and the first thing I thought of was, oh, here, you know, here we go, you know, as a local and oftentimes groups come in and take over properties and they change the way it always was and Bill kind of, you know, felt that resentment. And then I was in my boat, right about where we are right now, headed towards the fort, and I thought, why complain? Why not get involved, check it out, see what's involved, and get on the get on the inside. If you don't like it, change it, you know? Or you may be surprised. Well, when I got on the board, when I joined the group and got involved and heard what was going on and what the Friends of Fort Gorges is up to, and the desperate situation that the fort is in, I became extremely excited and very, very much interested to do anything possible as well as recruit others because it, it does bring everybody a sense of joy to be able to actually partake and I mean I can actually do something? Yeah, you can. And and everybody wants to get involved. So it's a really wonderful was it's a wonderful enterprise. I'm glad to be in it. It is and, and everyone I talk to, all the board members friends of Fort Gorgeous, they get that same smile you just yeah, had. It, it really is. It's infectious. It really is infectious to have such a, to be involved with something as magnificent as an edifice as Fort Gorgeous is um, without any, you know, any uh, experience in any particular industry or anything like that. It's uh, it's all going for a good cause. I'm now with David Plack, another board member of Friends of Fort Gorgeous. Hi, David. Hi. How are you? Fine. What's your background in this? Well, I'm I'm, uh, I'm an old friend of Paul Drennan, so that he's the one who asked me to be on the board. But I also go way back in journalism in Maine. I was with the Bangor Daily News for a lot of years and Maine Times and Island Institute and stuff like that. So I have a background in words and pictures. And what what drew you to accept the offer of being on this board of directors? Well, I'd looked out at the fort like everybody else around here for years, and I'd seen Fort Sumter in uh, Charleston, and that's an enormous uh, tourist attraction in a national park. And here's this wonderful place uh, standing here, at least I hope it's still standing here, and um, uh, it's an enormous opportunity, and I thought, well, how how interesting that is and Paul brought me out here I hadn't been here before then and it's really an exciting place to see um, and well it's turned out to be a lot of fun and it's so close to Portland the idea that you can't get to it is frustrating for people so this will make access possible that's our hope and uh, you know it, it's a complicated process and we've you know it, it requires time and patience uh, the city's the owner and they have every right to be concerned about liability, but after a while we kind of think, come on, folks. Trying <laughs> to move it along. Yeah. I'm now with Paul Drynan, a mover and shaker of Friends of Fort Gorgeous. Hi, Paul. Hi, Leslie. So, tell us why you're doing this. Why am I working with the Friends Group? Yes. I love Friends of Fort Gorgeous because I've been going to the fort since I was a teenager, and I recognize it as the amazing, iconic place that it is. Um, I've always had a fascination with it. I love construction and architecture. 
and I just know that it is an underutilized space and there will never, ever, ever be another Fort Gorgeous. So we have to save it for future generations and we're doing it. And judging by the people here and the excitement, a lot of new people, people from out of town, you're, you're, you're making a difference. People are getting excited. People are excited. They've been excited for a long time. And it's funny, we do have more and more people from out of state. We've already started doing tours this year. We've already taken people from out of state out to the fort. So new fort friends from away. And it's amazing how on a regular basis, I still meet people who grew up in Portland, spent their whole lives here, and they've never been to Fort Gorgeous because they don't have a boat. Well, we want to fix that. We want to get people out to the fort, introduce them to the space. We need all the help we can get to make this a reality. I'm now with Hillary Bassett, the Executive Director of Greater Portland Landmarks. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Leslie. Great to see you. It's see great here. to see you. Now, this fort, is it part of Greater Portland Landmarks? Is it? Well, the fort is one of the great city landmarks, but actually it's, it's a place we named, Greater Portland named as a, Greater Portland Landmarks named as a place in peril a few years ago. And it's because it really needs a lot of work. But it is one of the places that people really identify with in Portland Harbor. It's a very special place. And uh, these places in peril, that's how you got started. They were starting to tear down very important historic buildings in the city. And Greater exactly. Portland Landmarks said, wait a minute, exactly. let's start this. <laughs> yeah, the city of Portland was in peril. In fact, we started when Union Station was torn down in 1961, and that's what got the preservation movement started. So you're right, places in peril started uh, landmarks, and there's still places today. So preservation is still much needed in our Greater Portland area. So do um, people come to you, for instance, Friends of Fort Gorgeous, and other places in peril come to Greater Portland and they say, we need help. We need you to look at what we have and help us save it. Absolutely. So when we do places in peril, we take nominations from the community. And Paul Drynan, who was working on, on the fort, came to us and said, what do you think? How can we get more awareness? And we said, you know, naming a place, a, a place in peril is a good way to get the community aware of what's out there. And I think that it's really been a great partnership that Landmarks and, and the Friends of Fort Gorgeous have had because we, we actually host their board meetings in our building and we really want to see these projects succeed because everybody benefits when a, a landmark is saved.